It's you again. Welcome back. My name is Haytham Mikawi, consultant of anesthesia, and today's topic is uh, airway fire in the operating room. Hmm. <laughs> yes, sounds dramatic, right? Well, it is. It can be loud, smoky, and very, very dangerous. Let's dive in before something catches fire. Picture this 68-year-old man, elective tracheostomy, fully asleep with general anesthesia, cuffed polyvinyl chloride endotracheal tube in place. He's breathing 100% oxygen. Surgeon takes the diathermy, zap. Suddenly, foosh, a bright flash, smoke rising, ventilators yelling. Oxygen saturation drops like a rock. So what just happened? This is an airway fire. And our patient is in big, big trouble. Let's learn how to recognize or prevent and manage it before it happens to your patient. So what exactly is an airway fire? It's not just a scary name, it's fire inside the patient's airway. Usually in the trachea or bronchi, it needs three things, fuel, oxygen, and a spark. Fuel is stuff like plastic tubes, gauze, or alcohol-based prep. Oxygen is, well, you gave it. And the spark, electrocautery laser or heat probe. So. Let's not invite a barbecue into the operating room, shall we? Here's the fire triangle. It's not just for firefighters. In anesthesia, we live right in the middle of it. Fuel, you got it. Plastic endotracheal tubes, surgical drapes, gauze, oxidizer. That lovely oxygen you're turning up to 100% or even nitrous oxide, which is even worse. Ignition, ah, that's our good old diathermy or laser beam. If all three are present, boom, fire. Take anyone away and the triangle collapses. Poof, no fire. That's your job. Let's look at the numbers. 81% of surgical fires happen in the airway or upper body. That's not a coincidence. It's where we put oxygen and tubes. 600 fires per year in the United States alone. Most during head and neck surgery, where oxygen is pouring out near the surgical field. And guess what? High inspired oxygen concentration, more than 40%, is the number one modifiable risk factor. Oh, and nitrous oxide. That one's not your friend. Avoid it. All right, how do you know if a fire is happening? Simple, your senses. You might see a flash or smoke coming from the mouth or tracheostomy. Your ventilator may scream high pressure alarm or sudden disconnection. You'll smell burning plastic. Your endotracheal tube might look charred or melted. There might be soot in the tube or breathing circuit. And worst of all, oxygen saturation plummets. Teaching pearl under bright surgical lights, you might not see the fire, especially if the prep was alcohol-based. So keep your nose and ears sharp. Here's the fire protocol. No, not just yelling fire and running out. Fire stands for four things you must do fast. F, F, the gases. Turn off the oxygen, the nitrous oxide, the whole shebang. No fuel, no fire. I intubation removal. Pull out that burning tube. Yes, even if you're scared. That thing is now a flamethrower. R. Rinse the airway. Flood with cold saline. Have that 60 milliliter syringe ready. E. Evaluate and rain tub 8. You need to get control again. Use a clean tube. Check the damage with a bronchoscope. It's not just a protocol. It's how you save a life. Okay, crisis over. Now what? Time for post-fire management. Take the patient to the intensive care unit. Start humidified oxygen. Give bronchodilters. Give corticosteroids. You're watching for airway edema, delayed injury, infection, or even RDS. Monitor them like a hawk, serial arterial blood gases, chest imaging, and fiber optic bronchoscopy. Remember, even after the fire's out, the damage might just be starting. Let's keep it simple. What to avoid? What to do? Avoid. High oxygen. Keep inspired oxygen concentration below 40% unless absolutely necessary. No nitrous oxide during head or airway surgery. And please, never use cautery while entering the trachea. Do. Use laser safe tubes if lasers are involved. Inflate cuffs with saline or dye. It helps identify rupture. Keep a 60 milliliter syringe loaded with cold saline on the table. And for heaven's sake, train the team. It's not just about what you do. Everyone in that room matters. Kids, tiny people, tiny airways, bigger risk. In pediatric airway surgery, the endotracheal tube sits closer to the surgical site. That means more fire risk. If you're doing a tracheostomy, don't zap your way in. 
use a cold scalpel, not diaphemy, and talk. Use closed loop communication, surgeon ready to enter trachea. Yes, oxygen turned down. Saline ready. That kind of talk saves lives. The fire is out. Tube is changed. Now comes the quiet danger. Admit the patient to the intensive care unit. Call ear, nose, and throat specialists early. Watch closely for swelling, wheezing, stridor, and infection. Even worse, they might develop delayed tracheal stenosis or full-blown acute respiratory distress syndrome. Fire leaves more than a burn, it leaves scars. Be ready. All right, listen up. This one's for you. During your morning surgical safety briefing, make sure to identify any fire risks. Talk about how much oxygen we'll be using. Confirm there's a fire plan. And yes, that 60 milliliter syringe full of saline, it better be filled and visible. Because once the fire starts, it's too late to start planning. Let's wrap it up. Airway fire is one of the most preventable emergencies in anesthesia, but it only stays preventable if you actually prevent it. Control the oxygen, coordinate with your surgical team, and have a plan ready every single time. Because as they say, if you smell smoke in the operating room, it's already too late to start planning. Thank you. Stay sharp and keep the fire where it belongs, outside the patient.